Hello everyone, my name is Sick and welcome back to Factorio. So today we are going to do something I have never really done before and this is kind of a basic tutorial video because as of last week, last Monday in fact, Factorio released a new expansion called Space Age and alongside Space Age they dropped the 2.0 update, which is actually free for everyone who owns the base game of Factorio. And it has a ton of quality of life improvements, like a lot. And one of the things is a overhaul to how train scheduling works. And it is a game changer. It is absolutely massive in terms of what you can do and that is what this video is about today we're going to be looking at train scheduling a little bit and in particular the new interrupt feature which is absolutely amazing and i'm going to show you a quick little trick with a circuit networks which before this playthrough which i am playing in co-op co -op with a friend I have never actually used before because it was really intimidating, but I looked at Nilaus's uh, tutorial video on these things and that inspired me to try it out for myself because after 600 hours I had never really touched it because it was too intimidating, too confusing and yeah, I just wanted to get my feet wet, so to speak, but we're going to start with the, uh, the train scheduling and in particular then the uh, interrupt feature. So we have a rather sizable base at this point. And as you can see, we have like all of these gray lanes are train stations and all of these yellow and orange uh, dots moving around our trains. Like right here, you can see these guys are moving along. I have learned my, or taught myself some tricks in particular on how to like uh, prevent deadlocks and i have to say i'm very pleasantly surprised that so far we have had no deadlocks in this base so far which is really really welcome um but what we're going to looking at today is how to refuel your trains and how to do that uh, effectively and basically automatically and this is really, really cool. So we're going to be opening up just a random train. We'll grab this one right here. And we have an overview of its new scheduling system. And this looks familiar to anyone that has made or played Factorio before. So we have, basically we have stations here. And what you see here are station names. So this guy is going to engines input right now. And after that, he is going to go to steel production. and. Basically, he has a few parameters once he gets there on what uh, determines when he leaves. So, for example, he said engines input right now and he has to wait for three different parameters. So either because we have this or command here, either he waits for an empty cargo, which is when all of his uh, train wagons are empty or he waits until 30 seconds have passed, or he waits for five seconds of inactivity, and that is basically when these arms have not moved. But as you can see, like 30 seconds passing happens a lot sooner, so the 30 seconds have passed, and now he's on his way to steel production. And he just keeps on doing this, and this is the way Factoria worked in the past as well. Uh, this is a beautiful spaghetti mess, by the way, so don't pay attention to that. <laughs> But the most important thing here is the interrupts here at the bottom. So interrupts are conditions that can be added to schedules. Their configuration is shared globally between all trains or space platforms. And that is a beautiful thing because you can design an interrupt and then you can select that exact interrupt for every single train. You don't have to keep setting them up for every train, which is, is absolutely amazing. It is some... Uh, real quality of life right there. But what does this interrupt actually do? Well, basically, this train, all of the trains need fuel, right? And we can check this tab and you can see we have 45 coal in the train right now. What this interrupt does is basically it's going to check for how much fuel is in the train. And once it uh, goes below a certain number, it is going to interrupt the regular schedule of going between steel production and engines input and it is going to go to a station that is associated with the interrupt and in that particular case that is actually going to be a refuel station so when we open this up we can see 
we have a few different uh, tabs here, but we have conditions and it is going to check for the condition of fuel all and that means all of the locomotives con attached to this train so we could have multiple right we could have three of these in the front we could have one in the front one in the back and it is going to check all of those for the amount of fuel Not so right now it has driven again and we are down to 49 coal but we have this list of uh, commands here i don't know all of them by uh, heart but this one is less than and this is more than and these are the most important ones so we're going to check the amount of coal that is in the train which is 49 right now and if that is less than 25 it is then going to go to a target station and the target station in this particular case is a refuel point which we can select and i'm going to set this up again in just a second and the waiting condition at refuel point is waiting for all locomotives to be fully fueled right so let's say we want to design a new interrupt we're going to add interrupt here and we're going to give this a name uh, we could do uh, solid fuel, for example. We're going to give that a, a new name, and now we have solid fuel. Um, we could also allow interrupting other interrupts, which is a little bit too advanced for me. I haven't tried that yet, um, but it's not necessary for like 99% of the cases, apparently. But anyway, we're going to check a condition and we're going to add an interrupt condition. And we have a bunch of things. And I don't know fully how all of these work, but you have a lot of flexibility in the commands. You have add specified station. I'm not sure how you would use that. We have circuit condition, which is using the circuit network to check for certain conditions. And it's going to activate based on that, being met or not. Uh, destination full or no path. Uh, so if it loses a path, maybe it goes to another station instead, which could be very useful. We have empty cargo, fluid count, fuel for all locomotives, or fuel for any locomotive, full cargo, full fuel, etc., etc. You can see the list right there. But we were going to check against fuel, right? And we're going to check not for, for having full fuel, but fuel in all the locomotives. And then we have that symbol right here. Uh, we can fit a maximum of 150 in any locomotive but here if we click on this button we can then select what type of fuel we want to check for right so right now we were checking for coal but this is now the solid fuel interrupt so we're going to select solid fuel press confirm and then we're going to say as well we're going to want um, less than 25 and now it is going to check for, uh, or do I have less than 25 solid fuel in the engine? And if that is true, we want it to go to a target. And then we have a list <laughs> of um, stations here, but we can say, because we can type at the top, we have three fuel stations. All right, that does not quite work how I imagined, but we're going to go down the list then. We have refuel points, actually, that is the name. So we're going to select a refuel point, Right, and then we were going to want to add a weight condition here as well. And so we have a, the same list of conditions and we're going to want to wait for having full fuel. And once that is done, it is going to finish. So we're going to then save this interrupt and it's going to check against that, I think as soon as it reaches engine input. So we're going to wait for that and see if that works because it should uh, then be checked. I think. So if we want to go there then, I'm not entirely sure when exactly it's going to activate. But this should work. Let's go back to steel production. All right, there we go. So uh, maybe because I put it manually, right? If I wait for that, now it's going to check at the station. Do I have that? No. So it's going to go to the refill point and then it's going to wait until it has a full uh, fuel, which in this case is still coal. We're not checking against solid fuel 
as a, as a fuel type. But it's going to wait until it is full, but then, oh, well, we still have a condition because solid fuel is still being checked for, so now it is getting stuck here. But we don't have solid fuel in the lineup, we only have coal, so this is just an example. We can delete that, and it is going to basically continue going on its way. And the really cool thing is that works for all of the train stations, or for all of the trains, I mean. So we have an, a train, a locomotive, in our pocket right there, very convenient. We can plop that down, uh, we would need to add some fuel, but we don't want to do that right now. But basically we can add some stations, uh, a weight condition, maybe another one, inactivity, whatever, uh, has cargo, and another station with a weight condition, time pass, etc. And then we would add an interrupt, and this interrupt is going to show up for any train that I put down. So we're just going to select that, I used the call icon before. We're going to select that and now for basically if i activate this train it is always going to go between these two stations until the fuel goes below a certain level and it's going to reroute itself to that train and now these guys are getting stuck because they all want to go in here well one wants to go in here and they all need to wait because he is stuck in that thing so if we remove this that unscrews that situation and i should really remove these two things <laughs> And add another one here all right so we have seen the refueling in action we saw a train dock here wait until it got fully refueled and then continue on its way but how does this refueling stuff actually work so we can get a station and we can just name it refuel points and as you can see we have 10 of those and that's fine you can use the same name for train stations as often as you want and then a train is going to randomly select one of those uh, stations with the same name that is in the schedule that he has so if he is scheduled to go to refill point it is going to select one of those 10 refill points <clears throat> and it's going to select the one that is closest to him and available now we have the selection here we have five refill points here if you zoom out we have another five up here so trains at the bottom and at the top of the factory have somewhere close to go but of course we need to have fuel in that and you can see we have this belt of coal coming all the way from the left and what we have here is a different station and this one is not called refuel point this one is actually called train fuel and as you can see this one is blinking red and that is because we have used a circuit network here to check against a certain condition and the circuit network is indicated by this green line that you can see moving around here. Um, and this is really cool and this is super basic. Like I said, before this playthrough I have never even touched circuit networks. But uh, I wanted to give it a try and this is super super basic. So what is happening here is this train station is also red on the map. And that means that this train station is off. And it is going to continue being off until a certain criteria is met. And that criteria is being checked for by the circuit network. So what have I done here? I have used green wire, which is now not a physical item anymore. It used to be before, but now <clears throat> we have this button here at the bottom saying make green wire and we have make red wire. Sorry, I need to cough for a moment. Sorry, I had to get a drink there because my throat was getting very dry. <clears throat> So we have the green circuit network here. And what I've done is I used this button, make green wire to hook up this chest to the pole, as well as to a programmable speaker. But this one is optional, you don't have to do it. And then I went through these poles to get to the train stop, right? And basically by doing that, I allow this particular chest to be red. Right, is it it is this one so here we can see it is connected into the circuit network to three different entities i think is that is what it means and it is allowed or it is allowing its contents which is the core here to be read now then i went up to the train stop and here we have another circuit network connection and here we can enable or disable this particular train stop 
and it is going to check for a certain condition. And here we check for call being in the chest that I hooked up. As we can see, we have 332 call in that particular chest right now. And this train stop is going to be disabled until I have less than 200 call in that particular chest. And why do I want to do this? And well, it is pretty basic. All of these trains are because of this new uh, interrupt feature are not coming by every cycle, which they, I had to make them do before this update. They're going to come every few cycles now. Once they reach the threshold, they're going to come here. But as you can see, there is not a ton of trains coming in and there's not a lot of movement in the call. So if I did not disable this train stop, the train that supplies this stop with call would continue going on endless cycles and endless cycles and endless cycles for basically no reason. There is no hurry for that train to always be driving. So I wanted to disable this until this chest is basically empty or almost empty. And once it does become so, I wanted to um, start going. And here we have the train. It is basically just waiting here in its little station you know, it's not moving, as you can see, it is sleeping right now. And that is because it doesn't have another station to go to. So it is completely full. And this is just waiting for either this train fuel station or uh, this train fuel station to request more coal. And that is being checked in the same chest over here. We have 305 coal in this chest. And if we have less than 200, then it's going to re-enable this train stop and that train is immediately going to leave the station and come and we can show that by basically just uh, opening this chest taking everything out and now you can see an alert train brandstof moet aangevuld worden in dutch basically train fuel needs to be refilled and now as well as these lights have gone back to yellow and on the map uh, you can see that this train station has gone back to white now if we click on that, we can see there is one train with this stop and there is a train on the way right now. That is the train that we saw sitting in the station earlier. It has gone and it is now arriving to refill these chests. And once this reaches 200 or over 200, it is going to stop coming again. It's going to take a little while and it may take a few trips, but this alert is basically what the programmable speaker is for. So if we select that, uh, it is also connected to that chest. And here we can see the same condition, uh, checking for call being less than 200. And we have a few options. We can have a volume for the alarm and I put it to zero because it's very annoying. You can have it being local around this area only or across the entire surface of the planet of Nauvis that we are on right now or global and then it would play in any planet that we were on. <laughs> uh, you can have different alarms, but also you can disable or enable an alert being shown. In this particular case, I have said to show the alert, uh, to show an icon, which is why here you see call, and then a text that I, that I put myself as well. And then you can also show that icon on the map. Now we still have less than 200, so that train, uh, has met its uh, condition of waiting for 30 seconds or having an empty cargo or five seconds of inactivity. So it has gone back to the train call collection and now it is making the circle again. It is going to come back and it is going to uh, wait for that uh, chest to be filled. So here it is again, it's going to continue unloading. And as soon as this reaches 200, we will see this thing going back to red and the train leaving and parking back in its station. Right, here we are 200, the thing goes to red. And now uh, if this is uh, over, we can just send it back to its schedule. It is not going to come back because now the train schedule is back to being red. It is super useful because now it's, this train is basically just sitting here full of coal, right? until it is being called for, which is only every so often. So that is very, very useful. And I'm doing the same thing, actually, 
with ammo resupply. So we have a few ammo drop-off points. We also have a lubricant input over here where we basically uh, check for the same thing, except here the condition is having less than 5,000 liters of uh, lubricant. And right now we have 11,000 liters. So this train is not going to come here for a while and it is just going to sit in its station right there where no other trains are going until we need a resupply. Super, super useful. But moreover, we have another condition that I can show you for the ammo, uh, which is also really useful. Basically, I have three outposts that need resupplying with ammo. We have drop off one, drop off two right there, and we have drop off three in the north, and they are all disabled. And that is also, we're checking for the same type of thing. We have a green wire attached to a chest. Uh, it might not be this particular one. It might be this one, actually. It is indeed. It is smart to not put it in this chest. Uh, and I put it in the second chest or the third chest, roughly, most of the time. Because that means, well, you can see, like, this one is always going to be empty before all of the other ones. So once we reach this chest, or this chest is emptying, it means that this one, all of these four are already empty and then this one is starting to empty. So then we need a resupply. If I checked uh, this chest, it will the train will come much more often. If I check this chest, maybe it's coming, coming too late if there is too much combat going on. So I selected the second chest. We read the contents, connected up to a pole and then to the train station and we check uh, that chest having less than 150 ammo or magazines. And right now we have 265, so this train stop is off. And I did that in all three, so they're all off right now. But we have one train that is going to all those three um, train stations. And there is one more thing that you can check because I only have the one uh, train supplying those. I don't want that train to be empty and then still continue to go through all of those uh, train stations. So what I have done here, uh, we have an ammo pickup. We have one train that is also sleeping. And opening that up, we have a few more conditions. Um, I also limited the uh, amount of ammo that can be in the wagon. And then opening up this, we see that the ammo pickup is here it is basically checking for having a full cargo or 30 seconds being passed or five seconds of inactivity and then it's going to go to ammo drop off free first because uh, that is in its most direct path and then it's going to go back down to ammo drop off one and then it's going to go to two and then it's going to circle back over here so basically it's making a loop like that but we have a new condition to be checked against because we have a cargo amount so we could do another station. Now let's say I want to send this to Red uh, Chips Pickup after all of these ones. I don't really want to do that, but we can check. Uh, where is it? Item count. There it is. So if we click item count, we have this cargo option. We can check exactly what type of cargo we want to, it to be checked against. That would be firearm magazines. And then we would have, like, if you have less than X, let's say less than 10, then you leave the station. Because that means that once it leaves the station, it will always have at least nine magazines in the uh, in storage, in the trailer. That's not the right word. Why do I lost? Why have I lost the word for that wagon? There it is. So uh, opening that back up, we can see uh, we can usually load about 800 to 700 ammo in the wagon. It is going to go to ammo drop off free, and once it has less than 300, it is going to leave. And that ensures me that I will at least bring some ammo to the next station, which is ammo drop off one right here. And once he reaches there, it is going to be checked again. And if he has less than 150, it is going to leave again. And then I know for sure that at least 150 ammo is going to be brought to ammo drop off too. So let's say I set this to exactly 600. 
right? Then I could say, okay, go here. If you have less than 400 leaf, if you have less than 200 here leaf, and then if you go here, just wait until the cargo is empty, like I do here, and then go back to the ammo pickup. And of course, if he runs out of fuel along the way, interrupt the schedule, go to a refuel point. I mean, it is such a breath of fresh air. It is absolutely amazing. This game has gone, become so much better with this update, but because you have so much more control over trains, they do less uh, bullshit laps that you don't, that they don't have to be doing. You know, it is super, super, super cool. I'm really enjoying myself. I have been putting in at least like 15 hours since Monday, and yeah, like I said, playing a co-op, just having a blast, working on this. Uh, huge spaghetti mess of a factory but you know it's ours and it works decently well and it's just so cool really really enjoyable and i hope that you enjoyed this little basic tutorial video i know there are much better ones out there but for beginners i think this might still be useful and easier to follow along because i myself well i have put in about 600 hours into factorio uh, across my life but um I have never been an advanced player like some of these YouTubers are. So sometimes I see them playing and doing things and I just don't understand what's going on, even while they explain things to me. And I'm like, okay, that is that just goes over my head. You know, can you put it into dumb people terms or something? I don't know. I'm not a dumb man, but sometimes it gets quite technical. You know, people do compare this to like a programmer's game sometimes. Anyway. That's it for this video. I hope it was useful to you. Uh, please let me know in the comments because that is very much appreciated. And I will see you guys for whatever video I do next.